What is Florida Red Tide? Florida Red Tide is a type of harmful algal bloom, or HAB, that occurs when there are higher than normal concentrations of a microscopic algal species called Karenia brevis, or K. brevis for short. K. brevis is a marine organism that is native to saltwater environments along Florida's west coast and elsewhere in the Gulf of Mexico, and is typically in very small quantities, which we call background concentrations. However, when K. brevis is present at higher than normal concentrations, it can produce some harmful effects. How is Florida red tide harmful? Red tide blooms caused by K. brevis are considered to be harmful because this organism produces something called brevitoxin, which can impact the nervous system. These brevitoxins can enter the bodies of wildlife and humans through inhalation and ingestion. Brevitoxins can accumulate in the sediment and seagrasses of marine environments, and these toxins can accumulate in affected aquatic organisms, like zooplankton, shellfish, and other filter feeders. The persistence of brevitoxins in marine animals and environments can eventually lead to the transfer of these toxins to larger animals, including fish, sea turtles, birds, and marine mammals. How does Florida red tide affect wildlife? Fish are the most affected by Florida red tide, experiencing coordination problems, fin paralysis, and convulsions when exposed. Fish kills are often the most noticeable effect of these bloom events often washing up on local beaches and collecting in canalways. Brevitoxin attacks the nervous system of fish, leading to the loss of gill function, causing the fish to suffocate. Coastal seabirds and shorebirds can often experience mass die-offs during Florida red tide blooms because the birds eat contaminated fish and crustaceans. Sick birds can exhibit weakness, seizures, difficulty breathing, and dehydration. Strandings of both live and dead sea turtles also increase during Florida red tide blooms. Sea turtles are exposed to brevitoxins primarily by eating contaminated marine invertebrates and seagrasses. Signs of exposure in sea turtles include lack of coordination, muscle twitching, jerky body movements, and extreme lethargy. Marine mammals, including dolphins and manatees, can be directly affected by consuming prey and seagrasses that have been contaminated by K. brevis. Rehabilitation of affected animals may be possible, but it can take weeks or even months. Blooms of Florida red tide that cover a large geographic range and last for long periods of time are most harmful to marine mammals, and die-offs of marine mammals have occurred during and following a bloom event. Signs of toxicity include nervous system issues like lethargy, equilibrium problems, and seizures. These marine animals can also be affected indirectly by inhaling brevitoxins that have been released into the air in a process we call aerosolization. How does Florida red tide affect humans? In humans, the brevitoxins produced by Florida red tide can cause eye irritation and respiratory irritation, such as coughing, sneezing, or itchy throat. For most people, leaving the area or going into the air conditioning can provide relief from respiratory irritation. However, this irritation can be particularly dangerous for individuals with chronic respiratory issues, such as asthma, emphysema, COPD, or other respiratory illnesses. Brevitoxins can also accumulate in shellfish, such as hard clams, oysters, and mussels, causing neurotoxic shellfish poisoning when consumed by humans. Shellfish harvesting areas are closely monitored by the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services and are closed or restricted as necessary. When a harvest ban on shellfish is in place, it means that these organisms should not be harvested or eaten from that area because it could be harmful to human health. In addition to monitoring, local commercially harvested shellfish are also routinely tested for red tide toxins during bloom events. Shellfish are only allowed to be harvested and enter the food supply chain if the shellfish pass toxin testing. This means that commercially bought shellfish found in seafood markets and restaurants are safe to eat during a Florida red tide bloom. Locally caught fin fish are also safe to eat during a bloom, as long as the fish has been filleted to remove any toxins that may have accumulated in the animal's stomach or intestinal tract. Just be sure to never eat a fish or any other animal that you find dead, distressed, or behaving erratically, as the reason for the animal's death or odd behavior is unknown and may cause illness. How does Moat's Beach Conditions Reporting System help during a Florida red tide bloom? 
The primary goal of the Beach Conditions Reporting System, or BCRS, is to protect public health and to ensure happy, healthy beachgoing experiences. BCRS reports include generally useful information about beach flag color, weather summaries, surf conditions, water temperature and color, drift algae, beach debris, jellyfish, and crowds. But during a red tide bloom, the BCRS becomes a vital tool for communicating red tide effects, such as dead fish and respiratory irritation to the public in real time. This allows beachgoers to be fully informed when making plans to visit area beaches and waterfront parks, which can be especially important for individuals with certain health conditions that may be aggravated by the presence of red tide-related irritation. You can check conditions reports for participating locations by visiting the BCRS website at visitbeaches.org or by downloading the BCRS Moat Marine Laboratory mobile app. You can also find web links to all sorts of additional resources, including FWC's Red Tide Current Status page and NOAA's Harmful Algal Bloom Forecast for Respiratory Irritation by clicking on the Resources tab. Having all this information at your fingertips can help you plan your beach day accordingly.